Shubarian. First Kings chapter 3, verse 26, 27. Come on, it's on the screen. You can read it with me. First Kings chapter 3. Let's read together. Come on. Then the woman who was the real mother of the living child and who loved him very much cried out, Oh, no, my Lord, give her the child. Please do not kill him. But the other woman said, All right, he will be neither your son nor mine. Divide him between us. 27. Then the king said, do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live, for she is his mother. We thank God for the Bible that's full of mothers. We thank God for Eve, who was the first mother in the Bible. She gave birth to Cain and Abel. We thank God for Mary, the mother of Jesus, Elizabeth, the mother of John. We thank God for Hannah, a praying mother who gave birth uh, to the prophet Samuel. We thank God for Jacobed, who gave birth to Moses. Thank God for Eunice, uh, who was the mother of Timothy. Thank God for mothers in the Bible. Today, quickly, I want to talk about uh, two mothers in the Bible. Today, their names are not given. Their names are not given. They're just two women who, who gave birth, and their story is tucked away in 1 Kings chapter Three. Hey, here's the breakdown of 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 16 through 28. Verses 16 through 28. Uh, number one, you see the association with two mothers. The association with two mothers. Uh, that's found in verse 16. Verse 16. Number two, you find the location of two mothers. The location of two mothers. That's in verse 17. Then last, we see the situation. The situation between these two mothers. Number one was a what? Association. Number two, location. Number three, situation. Situation. Now, this is a this is a good time, amen, during the course of Israel's history because Solomon has just become the king. He's become the king. The Bible said in verse 10 that he prayed a prayer, uh, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 10, and the Bible said, and his prayers please the Lord. But that used to be one of my favorite Bible verses when I was growing up. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 10. And his prayers please the Lord. When I used to read 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 10, I used to say, God, help me to be like Solomon, and I want my prayers to please you. Well, because his prayers please the Lord, listen, y'all, that lets me know that you can have prayers that displease the Lord. Mm, who am I talking to? You've been calling out on to God, but perhaps your prayers displease the Lord. How does your prayer displease the Lord? When your prayer is all about you and not about him. That is a prayer that displeases the Lord. When your prayer is all selfishness, all selfishness, is about your agenda, your dreams, where you're trying to go, what you're trying to do. Not trying to benefit the kingdom, not trying to benefit the other. That is a prayer that is meant to please you. It promotes your agenda. But thank God, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 10. I don't know who this is for today. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 10. And his prayers please the Lord. Hey, the Bible says because his prayers pleased him that the Lord gave him more than when he asked for. And how many know that when your prayers please the Lord, when your prayers are about giving him glory, building his kingdom, he'll give you more than what you asked for. We all know Solomon became the richest man. He had more women than he needed. Come on, help me, somebody. More women than he needed. He had about a thousand. I don't know how a brother can deal with a thousand women. There's not enough Niagara. Come on, help me, somebody, to help that brother with a thousand women. 700, I think, wives, 300, concubines, amen. And matter of fact, y'all, it was the women who brought him down because the Bible said it was his heart was turned from God. Be careful the people in your life that turn your heart away from God. Well, I didn't come to talk about that. I come to talk about this critical decision he made in verses 18 through 28. Somebody say the association. Hey, y'all, it's two sisters, two mothers, okay? 
They were prostitutes, the Bible says. They were harlots, the Bible says. They would have worked at Magic City. They would have worked the streets of Mormon. They, 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 they lived that kind of life. The soldier, two mothers. Hey, 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 the location of these two mothers, y'all, they lived together. They chilled together. Verse 17 said they hung out together. Two mothers, all right? Perhaps, y'all, I don't know what life was like for them, but it seems like life was not well for them. But anyway, they're, they're two mothers trying to make it. Their association, they, they hang out, their, their location, they live together. But then we see their situation, their situation. The Bible says in verses 18 to 28, Mark says, y'all, they both gave birth to a child. They both gave birth to a son. What a blessing to have a son. Back in the day, every mother's desire was to have a son. Every father's desire was to have a son. It's amazing that the text does not say anything about the father. It concentrates on the mother. Hey, 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 there were two bouncing baby boys. Both boys, perhaps, were on their way to the NBA or the NFL to deliver their mothers from where they were. Perhaps both boys were on their way to law school, middle school. Oh, isn't it amazing? When your child is born, you have so many hopes, so many dreams, so many aspirations for your child. And you know, it's good to speak your dreams and your aspirations to your child. It's good to speak positive things. All we see their situation. But the Bible says, y'all, one night while they were asleep, verse 19, one of the mothers, she laid too heavy over her child, and her child died. Her child died. In verse 20, the Bible says she went to the other mother, and switched out the children. Switched out the children. Oh, it sounds like a soap opera. Sounds like a soap opera. Switched out the children. Hey, hey, the next morning when the mother got up, all right, to birth her child, she noticed that her child was not living. But then she noticed that this was not her child. It was her friend's child. So you know what, y'all? She began to say, you're going to make me lose my mind up in here, up in here. You're going to make me go all out up in here, up in here. How many of you know there's a time to act crazy? There's a time to exercise wisdom. Come on, help me somebody. Help me somebody. And so she exercised wisdom because a real mother, a good mother, a godly mother exercises wisdom. Hey, 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 y'all. She takes her complaint to King. She takes it to King Solomon. Now, don't forget, God has just blessed his brother and said, I'm going to give you wisdom beyond measure. God had just blessed his brother. He said, I'm going to do some things in your life. What a blessing for you to be a prostitute and to be able to take your situation to the king. That ain't nothing but favor. That ain't nothing but favor. Because for you to be able to go to the king and to let the king know what is taking place. And so this mother stands before the king. They have a living child and they have a dead child. The mother who knows the living child of hers, she tells the king, that's my child. That's my child. She switched the babies overnight, and I had no idea. Hey, 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 hey. The other mother said, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. This is my child. This is my child. And so the king has to make a decision. And thank God for this king, this wise king, because the Bible says in verse 24, he said, bring me the living child. And he takes a sword. And he says, I'm going to cut the child in half. That's verse 24. And I'm going to give each of y'all a portion of the child. Guess who speaks up? The real mother. Real mama said, no, no, the devil is a die. Devil is a lie. Amen, amen. I don't want my child to die. As a matter of fact, I will suffer. I will go through the heartache and the pain. You can give the child to her. And that's when King Solomon says, I know who the real mother is. Give that child to this mother right here. How many know that God can work things out if you learn how to put it in the hands of the right people? Thank God for this mother who went to the king. Who am I talking to? You need to get more in the king's presence. Who am I talking to? You've got some stuff going on with your children. And if you can just get to the king, hallelujah, if you can just tell the king what's going on in your family, I stop by to tell you, King Jesus can do something about it. King Jesus can do something about it. Here's what I'm trying to say, y'all. You've got to be careful 
of your associations because your association has a lot to do with your situations. And if you've got the wrong associations in your life, if you're hanging with the wrong people, that can make up, mess up situations in your life. Because I'm talking to somebody right now, even though you are not a mother, there are some people you've been hanging with, there are some people you've been chilling with, and they don't mean you any good. As long as you got money, you sweet. As long as you got something to give them, they high find you. But when you lose what you have, they're going to lose you. Or oh, you need to be careful of your associations because your associations can affect your situations. But not only does your association, watch this, your, your location can affect your situation. Hey, hey, you got to catch this. The people you hang with and the places that you go, you got to be careful of the places you go. Sometimes when it seems like I'm on my way to a good place, it may seem like a bad place. Hey, 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 their, their, their location, their location. They live together. They, they hung together. Who is God speaking to? Watch this young folk who are home for the summer. You got to be careful of your location. Hey, there's somebody here, watch this, watch this, who can tell you there's some places that they've gone, there's some people that they've hung, hung with that they felt something when they went. They felt something when they met them. Something said, don't go. Something said, leave him alone, her alone. How many know that's the Holy Spirit trying to protect you from a situation? There's somebody, if you're not open, if you're not open this summer, if you're not open in the next 30 days, who you hang with in the places you go, you're going to mess up a good situation in your life. Hey, y'all, thank God for this mother who knew to take it to the king. Who am I talking to today before we close? You got to take it to the king. Hey, pick up your hand. Now, pick up your hand. Now, flip your paper over real quick. Flip your paper over real quick. Game is coming on in three and a half hours. Pick your paper over. <laughs> Write down these three words. Three words. Number one, giving out. Giving out, giving out is an example of a real mother. Number two, giving up. Number one was what? Giving out. Number two is what? Giving up. And then number three is giving in. Real simple. Elementary, dear Watson. Elementary, dear Watson. Giving out. Number two. Number three. Giving in. Hey, hey, look what the Bible says. The woman who was the real mother of the living child, verse 26 who loved him very much. Hey, y'all, she loved him. She loved him. Hey, 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 hey. God calls mothers to give out love. Love. You got to catch that love. Now, watch it, y'all. Sometimes it's hard to love when I was not loved on. Sometimes it's hard for me to share love when I never received love. But whatever happened in your childhood, you need to realize giving out is an example of a real mother. She loved her son very much. We need parents, y'all. We need mothers who will give out love. We need mothers who will give out advice. We need mothers who will tell it like a T.I. is. We need mothers, y'all, who will set boundaries. We need mothers, y'all, who will tap that behind when that behind needs to be tapped. We need mothers who will throw darts at their kids. Come on, help me, somebody. Whatever it takes to get your child's attention, please don't put that on the tape. Amen. But we need mothers who will give out wisdom and correction. We need mothers, y'all, who can give out. You got to catch this. Joy and peace and love. We need mothers who knows how to put out fires. Mothers. That is so important. Oh, oh, who am I talking to a mother who needs to give out? Give out, give out. Hey, 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 number two is giving in or giving up. Give up means to relinquish, to conceive of something or someone, to, to give up, to give up, to relinquish something. Look what the Bible says in verse 26. It's highlighted. Oh, no, my Lord, give her the child. You're not about to kill my son. I'm willing to give up my son so that he can live. Hey, 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 who am I talking to? There are some mothers who've given up their dreams. There are some mothers who've given up their time. There are some mothers who've given up a date life with a boo so that their child could get what they needed. Why do mothers give up so much? It's because of their love and their concern of a child's well-being. Why does a mother give up so much? Because they want to see you grow and mature. Why does a mother give up so much? Because she wants to see her child succeed. And listen, those of us who got mothers, you need to appreciate mama today. 
You have no idea what mama gave up just so that you can have what you have today. You know how much how mom sacrificed. You sometimes you don't. It took me, it took me, it took me having children of my own and having to give out lunch money. Come on, help me, somebody. Before I recognized when three of us were in middle school and high school, and mama used to give us a dollar a day. That was $15 a week in the 70s. $15 a week. Is that right? Yeah, $15 a week. Three boys, a dollar a day. $15 a week. Times four is 60. $60 a month. That was just to get something to eat. We didn't qualify for the free lunch program. I tried to change the numbers, but it didn't work. Come on, help me, somebody. You didn't know about that, mama. You didn't know about that. But I, I tried to erase your figure. <laughs> change that three to a one. Didn't work. <laughs> $60 a month. $15 a week, Shula. That was just to eat. Lunch. Had nothing to do with the weekends. When we said, Mama, can I go to the movies with Andre and Adrian? Mama, can we have some Chuck Taylors? Mama, can we do this? Mama, can we do that? And it was amazing to see Mama trying to do the best she could for her three boys. Have no idea what my mom gave up for me and my brothers. Have no idea all the sacrifices that she made. The days where she didn't eat lunch so that we could have lunch. The days where she made stuff work so that we can eat, but she didn't eat. Didn't understand when mama used to say, I'm not hungry. Maybe mama wanted to make sure that her three boys had enough. <laughs> I'm good, y'all eat all y'all. Oh, you need to take care of mama today because you don't know what your mother gave up just so you can be where you are today. And I know that's not everybody's story. Because I know some of us grew up with some mothers who, who didn't do all that. I know you used to work with them and say, I wish my mom would have given up something. But let me tell you something. The mere fact she allowed your behind to live and did not abort you, did not get rid of you, that's a blessing. Yes, your life could have changed. Yes, she could have been different. But how do we know what mom had to go through? Oh, thank God for a mother. Be careful when your child's expectations are more than what you can give, their expectations. Because sometimes, y'all, we have a habit of giving more than what we can give. Your child expects so much. You only can give so much. Be careful going in a major debt for your unappreciative, <laughs> inconsiderate, <laughs> stubborn, selfish child. You be careful. I'm trying to help someone. I'm trying to help somebody. I told you, I told you, we leaving a legacy for our children. A spiritual legacy in my quiet time. We also leaving a financial legacy for our children, our grandchildren. But let them become ungrateful. When I get in my 70s and my 80s, I'm going to change that bad boy in a minute. One of the reasons that makes me do what I do for my children because they are so grateful. And I'm looking at some of y'all. You just as ungrateful. Always complaining, ain't happy about nothing. You ought to thank God you got a room to vacuum. You ought to thank God that you got trash to put in the trash can. Thank God that we can pay the monthly note to keep the lights on and the water on and the gas on. I'm trying to help somebody. You got to thank mama for giving up. And you'll never understand it till you have your own cheering. You'll never know what your mama's gone through for you until you finally have some children. Mama used to say, keep on living. Keep on living. <laughs> You're going to see one day. Mama used to say this, I hope I'm around when you have your children so we can see how things go. <laughs> I ain't understand all that back then, Rob, but I understand it now. Mama used to say, oh, some of that going to change. Some of that going to change. Some of that going to change. After you have yours, oh, you got to give up, got to give up, got to give up, got to give up. Who am I talking to? It keeps hurting you. 
You keep going in your wallet. Listen, ain't nothing wrong with going in your wallet, Billy. God bless you, Eric. I see you looking at your daddy. Daddy, is he talking about me? Yes, he's talking about you. <laughs> Listen, mom and daddy don't mind going in their wallet, especially when your children are doing what they're supposed to do. Doing what they're supposed to do. But there's time, y'all, and I'm out of here, you got to say no. Because life doesn't always say yes. And so many of us can't handle a no. And you start acting a fool, cutting up. Because you've trained me to do that. You never put me in my place. You need to tell your child, I brought you in this world. And I take you out in this world. I would dial 911 and say, I just killed my baby. Come and pick me up. I will start a jail ministry, Brian Christian Church Jail Ministry. <laughs> We're here for what? Worship the word and the witnessing. <laughs> hey, this is it, y'all. Number one was what? Giving out. Number two. And number three. Hey, look what she says in verse 26. We're going. She says, don't kill him. She has to give in. Don't kill him. I love him very much. Don't kill him. She's willing to let go of raising her son so that her son can live. She's willing to live in pain because it's going to be in pain to watch somebody else raise my child. But my joy comes in knowing he's still living. She's willing to give up what she wants and what she needs in order that her son can live. Y'all, we got to be able to give in. Verse 21, 7, verse 27 says, The other woman shouted, Go ahead and cut him in half. Then neither of us will have the baby. There are some people who are suffering, and they want to see you suffer. Thank God for graduation from high school and college. But everybody at your house ain't there to celebrate with you. There are some folk who are going to hate on you. But you could have done this, and you could have done that. And you just go on and keep doing what God has called you to do. Hey, hey, you guys. What does this text say about God theologically? That God loves mothers, even if they're dysfunctional. God loves little babies. God dispatches wisdom to save children and their family. God provides for mothers in all kinds of situations. Theologically, God will dispatch wisdom to a person to show you what you need to do about your children. We thank God for all these things that the word, this text teaches us. I close, come on, pray, sing with this story. True story, y'all, about a concentration camp, World War II. Some of us were not even born then. But there's a guy by the name of Solomon Rosenberg. I know you don't know him because I don't know him. But his name is Solomon Rosenberg. Hey, y'all, he was picked up. His wife, his two boys, his mother and his father. And they had to serve in the Nazi concentration camp. Two simple rules. If you work, you live. If you don't work, you die. His mom and his dad were the first to die because they didn't have the strength and the energy to give, to live. So they had to die. Leaves his wife and his two boys. David is his younger boy. David is frail, doesn't have a lot of strength, doesn't have a lot of power. And he knows the next person in my family who's going to die from the Nazi's hand is going to be my youngest son, David. So every day he comes home from working in the camps and he sees his family. They run together. They, they huddle up and they, they pray and they weep and they thank God for another day of seeing each other. And after a couple of weeks of doing this, he comes home. And when he gets home, John, he notices his family's not around. So he asks his oldest son, where is David? He said, Daddy, they took David today. Because David could no longer work. So they took him and they killed him. 
He said, well, what happened to mama? She said, well, they were taking David away. David was screaming and hollering. Mama said, David, don't be afraid. I'll go with you. And that's just like a mother who would tell her son, who would tell her child, I'll go with you. We need mothers who will make the sacrifice, who would tell their children, I'll go with you. You don't have to walk alone. You don't have to walk by yourself. I'll go as far as I can go. Then you've got to trust God. Oh, as I talk about giving up and giving in and giving out, I think about Jesus because he gave out. He gave out love. He gave out joy. He gave out peace. He gave out healing. Oh, when I think about the sermon, I think about Jesus. He gave up. He gave up his life. He died until the sun refused to shine. He died till he can breathe no more. He died. His blood was no longer warm, running warm in his body. He died, but then he gave in. He stayed in that tomb. He stayed in that grave. All night Friday, all night Saturday, all night Saturday night, and then early Sunday morning, he got up. And how many you know that if you learn how to give out, if you learn how to give up, and you learn how to give in, one day you'll get up. One day you'll help somebody else to give up. You know what's good about this text, y'all? As I take my seat, the Bible said in verse 24, and the king said, watch this, bring me a sword. You know what the sword represents? The word. <laughs> bring me the sword. As I lift the sword, the sword will decide what happens next. The sword is the word of God. Verse 24 is going to become one of my favorite Bible verses. And bring me the word. And let the word decide my future. Let the word decide my faith. Let the word decide the outcome of our life. Who today need more of God's word? Who today needs to keep it real? As we stand to our feet, today if you need to make a decision about Christ's change. Thank you for watching our broadcast. I pray that you are blessed by this word of God. I want to encourage you to call in for a free CD. That's right, a free CD. Just call the number 678-240-2213 and I'll be glad to send you a free CD of this broadcast. Let me invite you to come be a part of our Sunday morning worship services, 7.30 a.m., 9.30 a.m., or 12 noon. And even on Thursdays at 12 noon and 7.30, we have Bible study. Listen, I'm waiting on you and I'm watching for you. God bless and thanks again for watching our broadcast.